Hi, this is Thorsten Schmidt and welcome to the NMS Prime channel. Today I want to give a short introduction about the cable modem registration process. So cable modem registration means what happens when you plug in the cable modem to an RF connection and what happens next. So first of all, when the cable modem gets power and is performing, then the first thing that will happen is that it tries to search for a downstream channel and this is called downstream channel scanning. What happens is that the cable modem iterates over the frequencies. There are different kinds of algorithms. It depends a little bit on the vendors. So for example in Eurodox's specification um, a good solution is that the cable modem jumps every 8 MHz to check whether it's uh, a digital or an analog signal and when it checks that it's a digital signal then it will synchronize with the QAM modulation and then it will check if there are the special some kind of special DOCSIS messages inside which are for example called MAC domain descriptor. Afterwards it finds a downstream channel with these kind of messages so they are called MDD MAC domain descriptor and they include examples or they include information about how the upstream channel works. So for example, inside of these messages there are the frequency at which the cable modem can send on the return path and this is exactly what happens next. So once the cable modem gets a correct downstream channel, it takes a look at which upstream channel it can now send and then it will stay uh, will start um, with the ranging process. So some of the, the people split this in two different sections so which means first it's scan downstream channel and then we say we obtain obtain the the TX permissions not the RX the TX um, parameters and what happens next is that the cable modem performs the ranging. So ranging means that um, the cable modem must send during the CMTS, during the head end, but during the registration process the cable modem did not know with, with which power it needs to send. So and what the cable modem does is that it just powers up or powers down his value and tests whether um, the CMTS can hear the cable modem. So once the CMTS hears the cable modem, it says the cable modem, okay, maybe this was 5 dB too much or 5 dB too less, so please adapt your transmit power. And this process is called ranging. So after ranging finish, this is um, only the RF, so the, the RF part of the registration. After the ranging finishes, it's getting more interesting. So first of all, there is some kind of easy, um, easy encryption process, which is called BPI. But there is some kind of pre-BPI, um, which is called EAE BPI. Um, but I don't want to jump into this now. Afterwards, the cable modem um, tries to get a valid IP address and this is, as much of you will know, done through a DHCP protocol. So what will happen next is that we run the DHCP protocol. And this is done, um, DHCP is normal internet protocol, dynamic host client protocol, and it works like first the cable modem sends and discover. So the discover will come to the cable modem termination system and the cable modem termination system will forward the discover by its cable helper address to the provisioning system. And the provisioning system will send an offer which means okay you can take this IP address so it's like an offer and then we've got an offer and then the cable modem if uh, if the cable modem likes the offer, 
he will send a request and uh, saying, okay, I want to take this IP address. This is also forwarded by the cable modem termination system to the provisioning system via the cable helper statement. And then the provisioning system sends an AC, uh, acknowledge message, ACK, which implies, okay, this is your address and now um, you will you will uh, use it for, let's say, 24 hours, which is a normal, which is a normal lease time. And I guess many of you guys, which are not deep into the provisioning process, wonder um, what's coming next um, or how does things go forward. So inside these messages, which came from the provisioning system, there are some statements like where should the cable modem request his information about how it should be configured. So for example, in these messages, which are coming from the uh, from the CMT or from the provisioning system is the offer and the HK. And inside of it, there are the informations about how to go next. So here is some config file specification inside of it. I will print in um, a screenshot. And this is also exactly what we do with NMS Prime. The DHCP implementation in NMS Prime is a normal ISC DHCP, which is the, the most used open source um, DHCP server or service. And inside these packages, which came from the provisioning system, is the config file uh, specification where the cable modem can get the config file. So, and this will be the next step which is done via TFTP, which is Trivial File Transfer Protocol. And um, this will be the next step. That was not really true. Between DHCP and TFTP, there could be one step, which is called time of the day. I guess most of the cable models requested. It's just some kind like NTP, so Network Timing Protocol, but uh, far more easy um, to request the modem's time. So, okay, I will repeat. We've got um, some kind of easy encryption which is going on. Then um, we've got the DHCP stuff, we've got the timing protocol, and inside the DHCP messages from the provisioning system is the information where the cable modem can find this configuration file. And in a separate video, I want to jump into how, NM how we build configuration files in NMS Prime and how configuration files look and what you can do with them. So when, once the cable modem gets the configuration file, the next step will be the registration process. So registration means the cable modem checks So there was a typing error, doesn't care. Um, once the cable modem gets the config file, it will register and it will perform like in the config file specified. So for example, in the config files are access lists, there's the information how fast um, the cable modem can perform, so some kind of quality of service profiles. Um, there are commands inside which say how the CPE should perform and all kind of this stuff. So I want to jump into this later. And after the cable modem interprets the config file, we are far done. What happens next um, is that it could be, if we have DOCSIS 3.0, that we have the downstream channel bonding, which means using more than one, um, more than one DOCSIS channel, and afterwards the upstream channel bonding will be performed, which means using more than one channel in the other direction, so in the reverse direction and the upstream direction. And when once this has finished, then we've just go through the normal BPI, which is the baseline privacy interface, and this is some kind of encryption in the forward path. So most of the time it's called BPI plus. So okay, and afterwards we've gone through this. The cable modem is online, and then the end devices behind the cable modem will register. So for example, the CPE, if there's a CPE inside, and the modem terminal adapter, which is a shortcut SMTA, which will be the phone. So this is the entire registration process. Um, 
I want to jump into this in later videos, how we solve the different steps in NMS Prime and what are our basic principles and why we do this. So for now, thanks for watching. If you are interested in more of the stuff, don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter and hope you enjoyed the content. We will see you in the next video.